This is a 24 millimeter lens on my Black Magic Pocket Cinema camera with a Super 16 millimeter sensor. That means that the shot that you're seeing now has the compression of space of a 24 millimeter lens with the field of view of a 69 millimeter lens if it was on a 35 millimeter sensor. I've been thinking a lot about Stanley Kubrick lately. Um, Kubrick has always been uh, an incredible inspiration in my uh, cinematic life. And I've been analyzing his films more and more lately, and the more that I look at his films, uh, the more that I kind of start to, started to observe this, this really different kind of story structure. Uh, his films almost felt uh, segmented, uh, like they, like, you know, the, the first part, his entire film always felt incredibly uh, conducive and, and, and spoke, you know, strong morals and, and messages and ideas, uh, but I always found Stanley Kubrick's films incredibly richer than uh, something that just explored really deep ideas, and I, I never really uh, understood why I felt that. Uh, but I mean, it was obvious. There was there were so many things, and just like eyes wide shut. There's so much about marriage and uh, um, and the things that we kind of do to each other in marriages, and how kind of unnatural. Uh, that way of thinking is and surviving is, uh, but then there's there's parts that are radically not that and and are very kind of uh, about just what we what we desire as human beings and and, and crave and and uh, the monster that's kind of inside of us that we fear to let out uh, and uh, those are two very different kind of messages that still very elegantly kind of uh, fit into the same film and are kind of about the same kind of thing. Mm. Uh, and I, I, I never understood how he could so elegantly come up with this, but, but as I started to study it more and more, um, it became more apparent that... Um, it became more apparent that uh, I don't know th th that there was something that I was that I was missing, and, and it became more apparent that like they almost clustered like like it was almost like observing gravity for the first time, and, like how it worked. Like like I started to realize these kind of groups of of ideas that that kind of cluster around one another, uh, but I never really understood it incredibly firmly. This is a 35mm lens on my Super 16 sensor. That means that it has the fill, uh, compression of space of a 35mm lens with the field of view of a 101mm lens. So, so the, uh, um, so the problem, you know, kind of st stuck in the, in the back of my brain. I was always kind of, you know, thinking about it and, and, and uh, uh, analyzing it off and on, um, uh, but then one day I, uh, I, I rewatched a documentary that I've always really liked uh, called Stanley Kubrick, A Life in Pictures, uh, that goes across, you know, his entire life was made right after his death, uh, and in the documentary, Brian Aldiss, uh, the author of the short story that, um, AI is based off of, uh, is talking about writing with Stanley Kubrick and everything, and, and talks about how Stanley Kubrick believed that that once he had like a, a good six or seven chunks uh, that you kind of fit into a movie, uh, then you pretty much had it. Like like that was that that was the, the elements of, of of a good film. Uh, and he called the chunks a, a non-submersible units, and these kind of non-submersible units. Um, uh, and and of course you know that lit up a light bulb inside. These were those little 
clusters of gravity that I was I, I was observing these these little sections where you know ideas were talked about in different ways but still connected to each other but but still separate and unique uh, in their own way uh, and it, you know it really inspired me to start start looking into it I mean you can you can and and observing Stanley Kubrick since I, I went and watched you know his one Full Metal Jacket Clockwork Orange. Uh, uh, and you know, uh, suddenly eyes wide shut, uh, and suddenly uh, these uh, non-submersible units became kind of very clear. Uh, like in two thousand one, for example, uh, you have you know Dawn of Man, uh, and that explores you know all these interesting kind of uh, violent tendencies and, uh, and and things like that. Uh, uh, you know, its own separate ideas that that still maintain to the whole piece, and then you have uh, gravity, where you know he explores uh, weightlessness and and no up or down direction, and and the marvel of what it is to you know live in space and be in space. Uh, then you have the moon with you know secrecy and kind of uh, uh, discovery of alien life and and. That those mysteries and almost kind of sinister intents that they have, and then you have discovery, uh, where you 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 know you observe Bowman and and, uh, and everything that goes on there, and uh, you know you 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 go further into you know man's kind of drive to to go further and. and the dedication that that takes and, and things like that, and then you have uh, Hal uh, and everything that he kind of represents with, you know, his citizenship and, and fight to survive and, and things like that. And then you have uh, this, you know, Stargate and, and Star Child and, and all the, that kind of stuff. Uh, and each one of those elements, you look at a film like 2001, you can very easily kind of see the, the separations between those segments but still uh, you have, you know, one, an overarching story, which really helps kind of seal them together. But, you know, the lines are kind of blurred between where exactly they start and begin, and, and uh, you know, they tie in really well to each other. And the, the elements of, of kind of what the entirety of the film tries to speak about and say uh, uh, are in each segment, but each segment discusses its own unique uh, ideas inside the film, and it's, it's an incredibly uh, masterful way to kind of uh, make a very rich film that discusses a lot of different ideas and, and uh, says a lot of different things. This is a 50mm lens on my Super 16mm sensor. That means that it has the compression of space of a 50mm lens, but the field of view of a 144mm lens. I mean, because once you start to really look at uh, these kind of, you know, his, his films, and you, you start to really see the things that he discussed, uh, it becomes a, an incredibly very efficient and elegant way to communicate the, the most uh, enriched version uh, of what you're trying to say. It's, it's almost like a uh, an essay without words. Uh, you you look at it and and uh, it's like a, a college thesis. You know, it, it goes to the point of of discussing rich ideas that you can you can sit and and talk about for hours and hours and hours, uh, and still never really get to the bottom to or understand. And that's only in you know one scene in one uh, non-submersible unit, as he called it. Uh, uh, you have several scenes that, that communicate, you, you treat each non-submersible unit as, as a small movie itself about something, and, and you emphasize all those ideas, and you play with all those ideas, and then once it's done, it's done. Uh, uh, you know, you're revisiting and, and talk about something else, a, a different kind of aspect of of what... Uh, you know your your entire overarching kind of kind of theme is what what you're trying to talk about, 
in your entirety across the movie. Uh, and you follow that rubric, you know, Kubrick's rubric. Uh, and I think the, you can very easily make incredibly deep and influential, meaningful films, uh, meaningful pieces of art, like Kubrick did.